In this video, we're going to cover some of the new updates that came out as part of Power BI's June 2024 update, including things like some new updates to the visual calculations, some new info functions, as well as the new PBIR format for your Power BI reports. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan. And welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's start with the updates to the visual calculations, which makes this feature available to more visuals, more specifically on the scatter and the map visuals. So visual calculations is a feature that lets you create simple calculations without necessarily needing to learn about the semantic model itself. And it's actually a feature that came out not so long ago, and I did cover it in a separate video if you want to learn about what it is. And personally, I don't really use the visual calculation feature that often. And that's purely because I prefer to have my measures reusable for other things in my reports, uh, which visual calculations don't really allow you to. However, if you want to utilize visual calculations, now it's available for more visuals. The new Power BI Home is now in general availability as of this month. So this is the landing page that you get when you open up Power BI Desktop for the first time. So this is basically the landing page that gives you a bunch of different resources to get you started uh, very quickly in Power BI. So it could be things like where to get your data from various sources to any of the more recent ones that you worked with, or even some recommended ones. It just speeds up that initial process. Large semantic models can now be downloaded as PBX files from the Power BI service. Now, I've never really used large semantic models before, and that's purely because this feature is a premium feature only. But from what I understand, it's basically a semantic model that lets you go beyond the 10 gigabyte limit. That is the typical kind of limit that you have for Power BI datasets. And in the past, if you wanted to interact or work with these large semantic models, you would only be able to connect to them live. But now, as of this update, you can now download these as a PBX files, like you normally would any other report files in the service, which gives you a lot more control over your semantic models. There are three new info functions that are now available. Now, info functions were released as part of the new DAX query view, and it's basically some functions that let you query the semantic model itself. Maybe you want to investigate certain tables, columns, basically anything that you have and you want to know information with in your semantic model. And the only one that I can kind of vaguely understand that might be useful is the calculate dependency, which is essentially a function that lets you figure out the dependency of your measures within your model. I've not really found a use case for doing this or building these in my report, so I'm going to see if I can cover it in a future video. Being able to show your visuals as tables was a feature that was released not so long ago, maybe a few months ago now. And as part of this month's update, this same feature is now available on mobile. So essentially, if you're viewing Power BI reports on your mobile version with all of these different visuals, you have the option to change and convert these visuals into table values. So being able to see your data in table form is really useful, especially if you want to see the actual number value as opposed to visuals. The new PBIR format has now been officially announced, and it's basically a new file format, which is a more text-friendly way to store your reports as files. So if you remember, not so long ago, they added this ability to save your semantic models into a TMDL format, which basically lets you kind of work with your semantic models and store them in a text-friendly format. Now, the PBIR is basically the same concept, except that it's now on the report side instead of the semantic model. And being able to store these files in a text-friendly format allows teams to work on Power BI reports, similar to how you would in a typical software development lifecycle. Now, if you are confused with all of these different acronyms and what they mean, I did cover it in a separate 
separate video because there's quite a lot of them now to keep track of. So if you want to learn more about them, including this new PBIR format. So go check that video out if you haven't yet. The last update that I have is around the Power BI Report Builder, which now lets you publish your paginated reports into folders that you have created in the Power BI service. Now, the folders feature has been around for a little while now, and they have recently made this publishing to folders available in the Power BI desktop experience. So you can publish directly into folders to keep yourself organized. And now this same feature is also now available to the Power BI report builder. And that's really it for this video. So as usual, I didn't cover everything that was released in this month's updates, only the ones that I thought were pretty interesting. So if you want to learn more about everything else that they have released this month, I'll leave a link to the full blog post in the description box below. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I'll do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.